Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Hallelujah. When you have it, you can either stand or just say amen so I know everyone's ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's the first page. Amen. Don't have to turn very far. And it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. <laughs> we'll stop right there. The Holy Spirit moved. <laughs> Hallelujah, and there was light. The Holy Spirit moved, and there was light. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit and sending your Holy Spirit back. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of the Spirit operating within the service to edify and strengthen your children. And Lord, I ask right now, anoint me, Lord. Anoint the words I preach, Lord, and give me boldness to proclaim the truth. Lord, and I ask that you anoint your people as well to hear what the Spirit is trying to say and anoint them as well to give them boldness in the sight of persecution. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you care to. Hallelujah. And some of you who will listen to this on internet from other states, probably wondering what I'm talking about, about asking for boldness. Well, if you don't live in Deshler right now, they're having a big old car show up front on Main Street. Amen. And people are walking back and forth by, amen, as I'm preaching. Amen. And we need the power and the anointing and the moving of the Holy Spirit to have boldness proclaim the truth. Amen. And last Sunday I preached about how the lamp of God has gone out in the temple. Amen. And I'll just reiterate for a few minutes about it. With Samuel, in the book of First Samuel, Eli was supposed to be the high priest and he was supposed to make sure that the lamp of God didn't go out into the temple. And it was supposed to burn 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. But because he turned away from the Lord, the lamp, the light went out in the temple. And when the light went out, three things happened. Amen. People died. Amen. People died. I believe it was 34,000 Israelites died when they went out to battle because the light had gone out. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant was stolen. And the Ark of the Covenant represented the glory of God. Guess what? When the light goes out, the glory of God leaves. Amen. And thirdly, Eli's children were killed. Meaning our children are facing darkness and powers of darkness. And our youth are committing suicide at a high rate. Killing themselves because they're stuck in bondage because there's no light. Why? Because the lamp of God has gone out in the temple. And that lamp of God for us spiritually signifies that fire that burns within your heart and your soul and when you go lukewarm it goes out and then everybody's left in darkness amen and we're getting part two this morning and this is good news the earth was out without form and void amen form and void translated from the hebrew uh, originally means there was death and destruction amen the powers of darkness Amen. After Satan fell, corrupted the whole earth when God first created it. Amen. Because anything God creates, 
is good. And it says, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. And in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we see that God gave Lucifer charge over the earth. And then Lucifer got prideful, and so he fell. Amen. And when he fell, he took all of earth with it. Amen. And it was, there was nothing but death and destruction left on the earth. Amen. And the Bible even uh, speaks and goes in depth just a little, gives us a glimpse. Amen. I believe it was in Jeremiah, correct me if I'm wrong, when he talked to the prophet and said there was a uh, big earthquake, or there was the earth sh uh, shook. And so everything was totally wiped out. Amen. And there was nothing left but death and destruction. Amen. Wiped whatever was on the earth that Lucifer was ruling over. All the dinosaurs and everything that scientists say that was here before man was here. After Lucifer fell, amen, he took everything that was created on this earth and took it with him. And there was nothing left but death and destruction because God's fury came. Amen. And we get a glimpse and see there was some kind of mighty earthquake that destroyed whatever was on here. And so the Holy Spirit then moved. <laughs> the Holy Spirit moved, and that's what I'm going to get to this morning. The Holy Spirit moved. <laughs> there was death and destruction, and Lucifer thought he had it all wrapped up. Amen. And the Holy Spirit moved. That's what the church needs is the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Because whenever the Holy Spirit moves, it brings life. And it also brings light. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit to move in our churches again, to bring light onto this darkened world. Amen. We need churches starting to preach about the Holy Spirit, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, being born again and letting the Holy Spirit move in our services once more. Because when the Holy Spirit moves, there's light and there's life. Hallelujah. It says the Spirit of God moved. <laughs> Programs are not going to cut it. Amen. Seminars are not going to cut it. Psychology is not going to cut it. We need a moving of the Holy Spirit. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When I first came to the Lord, amen, the Lord gave me a vision. Amen. And the vision was, it was three parts. Amen. It was really in a dream He showed me a vision. And the first part, I saw myself at work at Best Buy. And as I walked out the doors, it looked like World War III had gone off. Amen. There was redness in the back of the sky. And you could hear what sounded like um, World War II bombs dropping, the whistling sound as a bomb would drop down. Amen. And you could see just destruction going on everywhere. And then it fast forward, and I saw myself following the Spirit of the Lord, running through a wheat field, praising the Lord. And then it fast forward again, and I saw a rapture take place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, we're living in that first part of what I've seen. We're living in perilous times. Amen. You see the country walking away from God. You see them putting laws into place. You see in the people trying to shut up the Christians and shut up the church doors. Amen. Perilous times, spiritually speaking. It's going to get harder and harder to walk for Christ, to walk for the Lord. Amen. That's why we need a moving and an operation of the Holy Spirit to bring light and life, even in the face of persecution. Amen. We need the Spirit moving because that's the only way anything is going to get done is by the Holy Spirit moving. Amen. And most churches, unfortunately, have gone lukewarm. Amen. You want to see the people out there right now who are listening to the worldly music, amen, who could care less about God or out there and lukewarm and decide to skip church this morning. You want to see them get touched by the Lord? Let the Holy Spirit move in your life. 
Amen. Get filled with the Holy Spirit and let the power and the anointing fall upon you so wherever you go, people are touched. Amen. That's the only way anything is going to get done is by the moving and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And letting your light shine among all men. Amen. They may not like you. They may hate you. Amen. Well, not in Deschler. Oh, yes, in Deschler too. Amen. Two years ago, before we started this church, I went out onto the street. And I just gave the simple altar call. Repent. The great tribulation is coming. Repent. Come back to God. And you know what happened? They called the police. And tried to shut me up. Now, the police never came, but I talked to Bower Sox afterwards, who's the chief of police in our town. And he said, well, right now there's nothing I can do because you have the freedom of speech as long as you're not getting in front of people or in front of traffic and stopping the pedestrians. I thought, well, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. But somebody did call the police and say, well, what's he doing on the street? Don't you know we're trying to sleep, we're trying to relax and rest because it's dark out and it's nighttime out? Well, if you look on our website, I don't know if I still have that preaching on there or not. It was, it was dark because it was winter, but it was 6 p.m. You could see it right on the bank, clear as day, 6 p.m. <laughs> Someone try calling, we're trying to sleep. Oh, you're trying to sleep at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I tell you why they call the police. They didn't want to hear the truth. People don't want to hear about Jesus. Amen. They want to live in their sin because sin is pleasurable. And when someone comes along preaching the gospel, it convicts. And people don't like hearing that because they want something that will make them feel good. Hallelujah. That's why most of our pastors and preachers have swayed away to the people's desires and will preach something that will make the people feel good, that will keep them in the services instead of telling them the truth. And the sad thing is, there's no moving in the operation of the Holy Spirit in these churches. And if you notice, America's going down the wrong road because of it. Because there's no light. Amen. We need people who are on fire for God and won't quit until they get filled with the Spirit. And when they're filled with the Spirit, will yield to that Spirit. Amen. And will walk after Jesus. Amen. And let their light shine and let the gifts of the Spirit operate. Will stand up when they feel the anointing and proclaim what the truth is. Amen. To a lost and dying world out there, not worrying, amen, about what persecution they may face. Amen. But have boldness to stand up, stand up into the opposition of persecution. Amen. Hallelujah. We need the moving of the Holy Spirit. And I believe there's going to be one more outpouring before we go home. Amen. And I believe that this town and this state and this nation is going to get touched one more time for Christ. Amen. We had several... Amen. Praise the Lord. They're going to turn it up. I'll turn it up. (laughs) Hallelujah. I can preach over any radio. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer. See, that's what I'm talking about. People don't want to hear the truth? Well, I'll just turn up the radio out here. I can preach loud too. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) But we had a lady, me and my wife, Michelle, we were sitting here several months ago and we was praying. We was asking, Lord, why aren't we seeing the moving like we want to? Why isn't we ain't seeing the miracles like what we saw in the book of Acts? What's going on here, Lord? And a minister from Florida, all the way from Florida. Amen. We keep in contact with her on the internet, but she called us. Amen. She actually called my wife while I was at work, and she says, you'll never believe this. Amen. And she said, I had a dream, and in the dream, me and you were praying, and the Lord spoke. And he said, didn't I tell you I was going to see, you was going to see the glory of God with your own eyes? Hallelujah. Didn't I tell you, amen, that you'll see me coming? Hallelujah. A minister who had no idea what we was doing, what we was praying about, calls us all the way on the other side of the United States and says, the Lord wanted me to tell you something. 
Didn't I tell you you're going to see the power fall with your own eyes? Didn't I tell you that you're going to see the Lord coming, me coming back with your own eyes? Hallelujah. And my wife, amen. Just last week, she told me, she said, she saw this church full of people in town. Amen. And the Lord spoke to her in the dream and said, as bad as homosexuality is, that's not the problem. As bad as alcohol is, that's not the problem. As bad as drugs is, that's not the problem. And the Lord spoke in that dream and said, the problem is they left me. Hallelujah. And he said, but I'm going to pour out my spirit upon Deschler one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see a moving and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I could give you confirmation on the confirmation. What Michelle saw, what I saw run through the wheat field. Oh, I've got one more confirmation. We're two or three. Amen. Two or three witnesses. It'll come to pass. Amen. Spoke with my grandmother. This was several years ago. And she said she's been praying for 40 years. 40 years for revival to come to Deschler. Amen. And after 40 years of praying, the Lord spoke to her and said, It's coming with the youth. Oh, here's the youth. Hallelujah. Revival's coming. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit's coming. Your family members are coming in. Your friends are coming in. Deschler's going to come in. Why? Because he's promised in the last days that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. And we need to be sensitive to the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit move. And when the Holy Spirit moves, there is light. Hallelujah. And then when there's light, you notice in the rest of creation, oh, hallelujah, life starts coming. Amen. Life starts coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> hallelujah. The moving of the Holy Spirit. It's the only way the sinners are going to get convicted. It's the only way the bondages are going to get broken in the believer's life. It's the only way to overcome victory is through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit with your faith in the shed blood of the Lamb. You just hang in there. God's promise He will pour out His Spirit. Family members are coming in. Friends are coming in. Christians who are in bondage are coming in. Hallelujah. And the sinners coming in. Hallelujah. Lord, give me the heathens. Give me the heathens. Amen. I'm not talking about religious folk. Religious folk can stay in their dead churches. Amen. With their watered down gospel being lukewarm if they want to. Amen. God says he'll raise up a people. Amen. That'll serve him. Amen. Give me the heathens. Give me the ones that are stuck in drugs. Give me the ones that are stuck in alcohol. Give me the ones that are stuck in homosexuality and want out. Amen. Because guess what? When they feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't trade it for the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the heathens. Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, give me the heathens. Hallelujah. He's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Amen. And signs and wonders will follow. Those who believe these signs shall follow. They will speak in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sorry, Baptists. I'm sorry. Yes, John the Baptist did dunk him in water. But guess what? There is a Pentecostal man with power and authority coming down that road. His name was Jesus, and he said, I'll pour out your spirit upon you. I'll anoint you so that you can preach, and I'll use you. You'll be a witness unto the uttermost parts of the world. Hallelujah. He still baptizes in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love, the, I love the Baptist brethren. Amen. I'm just not happy with what the Baptist preachers are preaching. Amen. The Holy Spirit still for today. Amen. I'll just tell you how the Lord works. Amen. There's a remnant in every denomination. Uh, there's a dear brother who I know at work. I work with him every day. He loves the Lord. Amen. Loves the Lord. Amen. You could see there's a change in his heart and in his life. And whenever I'm around him, amen, he's always calling me brother. We're always talking about the Lord. Amen. We're always talking about scriptures. Amen. 
and he goes to a Baptist denomination who don't believe in the speaking in tongues. Amen. And I went to the truck with him. I was loading with him in a truck one day, and I just we was talking about the Lord, just as we always do. And I asked him. I said, well, "Brother," I said, "Why don't you uh, get filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues?" And he was sincere in his answer. He wasn't self righteous. Amen. And he said, "Well." Our denomination does not believe in that. And I looked at him, meek and lowly in heart, and I said, well, brother, I know what your denomination believes, but I know you know what the Word of God says, too. Amen. And that's where the conversation ended. A few weeks went by. Amen. Or it could have been a week or month. I'm not really sure of the time. Amen. But we was talking again. He says, we got revival this week at our church. Amen. We've got revival, and I'm going to be leaving work uh, early the next couple of days, and keep me in prayer that God moves. Amen. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, pray, pray that the Holy Spirit move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And I said, well, sure. And, uh, well, that week went by, and that next week came up, and we was on the processing lines. We was on line C, and he was two stations ahead of me, and I just felt the power of the Lord come all over me, and I, I thought, something happened, <laughs> hallelujah, and the Lord spoke to my heart, he just spoke to my heart, and he says, why don't you ask him what happened, <laughs> why don't you ask him what happened, and I said, Lord, I, oh Lord, it's a Baptist denomination, I don't, I don't think anything happened, the Lord said, just something happened, I could feel it in my spirit, I could feel my spirit churning, and I, I just, the Lord just kept dropping in my heart, ask him what happened, I said, okay, I'll ask him what happened. Amen. So I went up to him and I said, Brother, something happened. Amen. Something happened at revival. And he just looked at me and I said, I don't know what it is, but I just feel it in my spirit. Something happened. <laughs> I said, There's something different about you. Hallelujah. And he said, Well, yeah. He says, I went to revival last week. Amen. And he said, The evangelist got up there in a Baptist church. Amen. And he started preaching out of the book of Acts. <laughs> and he preached on the verse that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he said, and he was talking, and that preacher, that evangelist was talking about how you just can't have God in your heart being born again, but you need him all over. You need the power of God. And he said, there's something hit me, and it went down my back like a bolt of lightning, and I never felt that before. Coming out of a Baptist church. Hallelujah, the power of God hitting somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, the Spirit moved. Why? Because that evangelist preached about the power of God. And guess what? When you preach about the power of God, the power of God is going to move. When you preach about salvation, guess what? People are going to get saved. When you preach about the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, people are going to get filled and they're going to start speaking in tongues. When you start preaching about healing and deliverance, guess what? Woo! Yeah, sister! Let her out! Hallelujah! People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered. Oh, hallelujah! I'm glad somebody shout while I'm preaching. I'm glad somebody shout out while I'm preaching. Let her out, sister. Woo! Hallelujah! The power of God. The Holy Spirit move. That's what we need in our churches. The Holy Spirit moved. Hallelujah! He's moving this morning, isn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's so important, amen. Without the Holy Spirit, you got nothing. Amen. The Holy Spirit's what makes you born again when you accept Christ. Amen. Because I know most people would say, oh, well, you just said you don't have nothing. I have Christ. Well, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and into your life and makes you born again and changes everything in your heart, renews your mind. Hallelujah. Changes your desires. The things you used to hate, you love, and the things you used to love, you now hate. But don't stop there. Don't stop there. Get Filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. Christians need to stop quitting the stop. Oh, hallelujah. I'm jumbling my words here. Amen. I'll say it this way. Christians need to keep going with their walk. 
They stop at being born again, and then what happens, most of them become lukewarm, and they drift off back into the world. Amen. No, they need to continue putting their faith in Christ and the blood every day and keep asking and keep walking with the Lord and asking for that next thing, getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. People need to get filled with the Spirit. Christians need to start asking for the Holy Spirit again. Preachers need to start standing up and preaching about the infilling of the Holy Spirit again. Hallelujah. You know why our children are stuck in bondage? You want to know why suicide rates going up? You want to know why people are getting more drugs and more prescription pills? Because there's no moving of the Holy Spirit. I don't care how religious it is. If there's no moving of the Holy Spirit, you've got nothing. Amen. Because that's how the church operates. Amen. It's by the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. And if he's not moving, guess what? Jesus is on the outside of the church trying to get in. Just like in the church of Laodicea. Amen. Turn with me to Luke. Hallelujah. This is why the infilling of the Holy Spirit and being led of the Spirit, having power with God is so important. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 4. Verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. Hallelujah. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. First of all, Jesus is the anointed one. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him, and he is anointed. Amen. So I get sick and tired of preachers trying to give the anointing to somebody else because the anointing belongs to Christ and He's the one that pours out the Spirit and pours out the anointing. Amen. The anointing really isn't ours, but it's Christ's. And when we praise Him, amen, when we love Him, guess what? He takes the Holy Spirit and just starts pouring out and anointing you. Saying, all right, child, if you're going to start preaching, here you go. I'm going to pour it out for you. Go ahead. Let them know, sister. Let them know, brother. Amen. Who the answer is. So Jesus Christ is the uh, anointed one, and he's the one that pours out the Spirit. When he said in the last days, when Peter said, this is that, in the last days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, who do you think was pouring out the Spirit? Jesus was. Amen. Because the Father has given all authority unto him. Amen. So first of all, we have to realize, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he's the one that will baptize you. He's the one that will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And that's good news. Why is that? Because you can get filled in the church. You can get filled in your car. You can get filled at home. You can get filled on the street corner looking at automobiles out there. Hallelujah. You can get filled anywhere. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And He'll anoint you to preach the gospel. Amen. He'll anoint you to preach the gospel. If you notice in the book of Acts, when Jesus left, He told His disciples to wait and don't do anything until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's where most of the churches went wrong. Amen. Instead of waiting to be filled with the Holy Spirit, they go out trying to start a church on their own, try to start doing programs, trying to do uh, seminars, trying to do all these religious activities, but there's no power there. And what happens is flesh comes out and 
it comes out destruction. Amen. Lives are ruined. People are put in bondage. Why? Because they either become self-righteous, tearing down Christians, amen, or else they just give up because there's no anointing there. And they stop believing and they walk away. And they walk away worse than what they started out as. Amen. Because there's no power of God there. Amen. You do not see the disciples trying to start any churches. You don't see the disciples trying to preach anybody after Christ left. Amen. And went back to be with the Father. You don't see the disciples doing anything until they get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because it's the Holy Spirit that draws the men. Amen. So they can get saved. It's the Holy Spirit and by His power that heals and delivers. Amen. As one has their faith in the shed blood of the Lamb. So He'll anoint you to preach to the poor, meaning poor in spirit. There's many out there right now who have the face on, the happy face, and everything looks good on the outside. But on the inside, they're hurting. They don't know what to do, where to go, where to turn. And they just got a shell of happiness on the outside. But in their heart, they're crying out for an answer. Amen. People can deny it all they want, but that's the truth, because that's how I was when I was a sinner. I tried to use alcohol, I tried to use cigarettes, I experimented in a few drugs, amen, but it didn't give me happiness. Oh, on the outside, it looked like I was having a good time, but when I was alone, by myself, behind closed doors, amen, played all the video games I could play, Amen. Try playing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, preach it, sister. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Playing all the video games I could to try to get happiness. Hallelujah. Trying to do a little drugs, experimenting to get happiness, to get joy, and it didn't help. And tried to get into cigarettes. Amen. Thought it'd give me a buzz and didn't help. And tried drinking all the alcohol I could and it didn't help. Amen. And I was still looking for an answer. Amen. I found it in 2007. Amen. Why? Because somebody was filled with the Holy Spirit and the Lord laid somebody on, uh, my, um, on their heart. Amen. And they felt the presence and the anointing and got down on their knees and started praying for me. That day I got in a car accident about ready to hit a telephone pole. And my last words were, I ain't getting out of this one, am I? And I was talking to the Lord and I hit a telephone pole going 60, 70 miles an hour and didn't have a scratch on me. Somebody was praying because they were filled with the Spirit and sensitive to the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit and God answered their prayers and saved me from going to hell. And I started looking. I started searching. Amen. I, st I told myself I'm going to get in Genesis. Amen. And I'm going to go all the way through the Bible and then I'll be saved. And I got about chapter 2 and I was done. Amen. And I thought, my Lord, and I started crying out in my heart for an answer. And God came to me in a dream in 2007, amen, after a night of drinking, after a night of smoking by a fire. And I woke up a new man, and there was joy in my heart. There was peace in my heart. Why? Because the Holy Spirit moved, and there was light. And I saw Jesus. I met the Master. And then he called me to preach. Amen. A lot of people think that the Lord doesn't do what he did in the Bible, but he does. Amen. He still does. Amen. I can remember it was Thanksgiving. It was the day before Thanksgiving because I didn't have to work that day, and that's the only day I get off during peak season at Best Buy is on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Amen. But it was Thanksgiving, and that was that night before. And I went upstairs, and I went up to bed to go to sleep, and I laid down, and I was half asleep. The kids were downstairs, and Michelle was downstairs, and nobody was around. And I was half asleep. And anybody who has kids knows what I'm talking about when you're half asleep, and your child comes in and asks you a question or wake you up, and you're half asleep, and you're groggy, but you know somebody was talking to you. Amen. I was half asleep, and I heard the Lord speak. And he said, preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. And I shot up out of bed. I'm talking about an audible voice here, one that said Samuel, Samuel, one that said Noah, Noah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He still speaks to people. If you can just believe, all things are possible. Amen. And so he spoke to me and said, preach the word. 
And I shot up out of bed, and I knew who it was, and I was scared to death. Amen. I'm a new convert. I had just gotten saved two months prior. Amen. And I said, Lord, thanks, but no thanks. Amen. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I know what they did to your preachers. I know how there was rumor of they took Isaiah in a tree trunk and saw them in half. I know about Jeremiah going into prisons for 40 years. I know what they did to the Apostle Paul. I heard the stories how they crucified Peter upside down. Amen. I know how they tied some of the prophets in the Old Testament. Amen. And tied them to a tree and put honey on them so the bears could come up and eat them because they didn't like what they had to say. I know what they've done, Lord. Thanks. But no thanks. I said, Lord, find somebody else. I'm just a child. Spiritually speaking, I'm just a child. Amen. Go find somebody else. I don't know the Bible. I never went to a college. And I'm just a baby on milk. Go find somebody else. Well, I felt better. I don't think the Lord felt better, but I felt better. Amen. I went to bed the next night. Half asleep. Amen. And I'm telling the honest truth as the Lord hears me. And I heard the Lord speak again. And he said, everything will be all right. <laughs> I shot up out of bed and I thought, you ain't letting me out of this, are you? Amen. And so I laid back down again. And uh, I said for a third time, I said, Jesus, is that you? And I heard the voice for a third time before I fell asleep. And he said, I am here. <laughs> hallelujah I'm talking hallelujah just like what the Bible says if you believe what the word of God says what happened in here will can happen in your life amen he can knock the sinner off the high horse like he did Paul if thou could just believe and they'll have an experience like on the road to Damascus and wouldn't change it for the world Hallelujah. He could take the tax collector and save him like Matthew. Hallelujah. He could take the fisherman like Peter and save him. He could take the lawyer like Zenos and save him. He could take the physician like Luke and save him. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to have the power of God to go along with it and yield to the Holy Spirit and let him use you and let your light shine unto all men and you will be a witness unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad the Lord's moving this morning. I'm glad He's touching people and they're shouting and giving praise and giving glory because that tells me they believe what the Word says. Amen. God works by faith and He's going to use that faith to touch your family, to touch your friend, to touch your children, to touch your grandchildren. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You don't believe me? Look at me. Amen. I was out in the world. I never thought I was going to be a preacher. All I wanted to do was make a lot of money and have a comfortable life. Amen. But thank God I had family members who were praying every day and wouldn't quit. Amen. And touched their children and touched their grandchildren. Amen. And the Lord's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And he's going to start in Deshler right here because the Lord's already said it. I've had two or three witnesses where the Lord spoke to and confirmed it, and it's going to happen because his word says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Their sons and daughters shall have dreams, and uh, the old men shall have dreams, and the sons and daughters shall have visions, and your handmaids and your servants shall prophesy. Hallelujah. I could go on and on about the old men and women having dreams. Ask my father. He had a few dreams himself the Lord spoke to him through. Amen. I've seen vision after vision, seeing the Lord. Amen. Coming back, the Holy Spirit being poured out. I've seen handmaidens. Amen. I've seen servants of God being used in the gifts of prophecy and tongues interpretation. Guess what, church? Jesus is coming back. But before he does, he's pouring out his spirit one more time. Amen. And the Holy Spirit's going to move. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is anointed to preach the gospel. He'll anoint you to preach the people. Amen. He'll send you. He'll anoint you to heal the broken hearted. Amen. The anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit can bring families back together. 
Amen. It can bring marriages back together. Amen. It can help that dysfunctional families uh, whose children are about ready to take their life into their own hands. It can heal the brokenhearted, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We had a temp at work several years ago. His name was Brother Chad. I won't give his last name because I don't want to embarrass him. Amen. And he was a sinner or backslidden. Amen. And he found out I was a preacher. Amen. He came up to me and he said, uh, Brother, I, I have a daughter and uh, the courts have said I can't see her no more. And she's, and I won't go into detail, but um, the family was in the drugs. Amen. And I said, Brother, I said, let's pray. And I said, we went into that trailer and I laid hands on him and he laid hands on me and we just started praying together. <laughs> We're two or three are gathered and the power of God started moving and he started getting dizzy and he about fell into the trailer and about passed up and he's like, whoa, I've never felt anything like that before. And I was thinking, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And after we was done praying, I said, brother, I said, just put your faith in what Jesus did at Calvary in the blood every day and just believe you're going to get to have visitation rights with your daughter again. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. I said, you may not understand it, but just believe it and just believe God will move on your behalf. Every day he'd come up to me. And instead of Brad, he was always telling me, hey, brother Brad, my faith is still in the blood. And I'd say, praise the Lord, brother. And we'd do our work, and we'd come in the next day, and he'd say, Hey, Brother Brad, my faith is still in the blood. And I'd say, Praise the Lord, brother. And this went on all peak season. About two months, every day, he'd come up to me. Amen. And some of the sinners were getting mad because I would go and help him out in his trailers. Amen. If he was behind, if I got done early. And people would be coming up to me and saying, why don't you help me in my trailers? And I said, because that's my brother in the Lord. And the Lord told me to go help him, so I'm going to go help him. <laughs> hallelujah and at the end of the peak season amen before he was leaving he came up to me and he said brother <laughs> I got visitation rights with my daughter <laughs> hallelujah he could turn anything around if thou could just believe and it was his faith and the blood of the lamb and the holy spirit moved and there was light and he turned that king's that judge's heart Amen, to where he could have visitation rides with his daughter again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heals the brokenhearted. The power heals the brokenhearted. Amen. To preach deliverance to the captives. You can be, have victory over sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Cigarettes shall not have dominion over you. Alcohol shall not have dominion over you. Prescription pills shall not have dominion over you. Drugs shall not have dominion over you. Homosexuality will not have dominion over you. Fortification shall not have dominion over you. Just tell them the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. When you put your faith in that, hallelujah, there's a resurrection. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 The recovering of the sight to the blind. When you have the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he'll open up the word to you and show you truth. That's talking about spiritual blindness there. Amen. He'll open up the word to you. Just like I told you. Yes, the King James Version has the these and thous, but it's the only one I really trust. And when you don't understand the scripture, just ask the Lord and let the Holy Spirit move and he will show you. Why? Because he has anointed him and he'll anoint you for recovering of the sight to the blind. He'll give you the truth. And to set at liberty them who are bruised. Amen. There's a lot of marriages that are going bad there's a lot of families that are broken up a lot of our children or grandchildren are in bondages amen and people are hurting amen if you have the power and the anointing of the holy spirit the baptism of the holy ghost amen he'll use you Amen. And people will sense and feel that anointing. And it will set at liberty to them who have been bruised by the world and by life and who have been tormented. That's what the power of the Holy Ghost does. Amen. 
And that's why our churches need to start preaching about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why the churches need to start allowing the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. That's why the churches need to allow the gifts of the Spirit to operate in their church instead of worrying about what brother so-and-so is doing or what sister so-and-so is doing in the church. Amen. They're more concerned about what people are doing than what the Lord wants. Amen. The Lord wants to use you. He wants to use me. And He wants to use any other vessel that is willing and that will yield and that will be filled with His Spirit to touch the world and touch the sinners out there. Amen. Give me the heathens. Amen. Give me the heathens. Give me the brokenhearted. Give me the poor. Amen. Give me the blind. Give me the ones that are bruised. Amen. Because those are the ones that will be broken. Amen. Looking for an answer. And when the power and the Holy Spirit moves, they'll get their answer. And His name is Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. Amen. Would you stand?